And now I can officially welcome everybody to our Monday morning, yeah, Monday morning class here. Um, so last week, I, what I did was I kind of went over the panel of the instrument. So um, being that everybody has an E-series instrument, that makes it pretty convenient. You know, we got three EZ4 owners and an EY series owner, and they all work kind of the same way. Really, all of the instruments work the same way. It may not look like it, but when it comes to the kind of the fundamentals of how you you know, turn on a style, how you adjust your volumes and all that. It, really, the the instruments all work the same. Um, but, of course, the technology gets better as the newer, uh, more modern instruments come along. And you all what you all own what we call the silver panel instruments. In other words, you look on the panel and it's silver. That means it's one of the more contemporary models that we have. Now, the Easy series, of course, started with the Easy 1 and the Easy 2. They eventually added the Easy 3. Those were all one keyboard instruments and uh, so uh, those of you who have the easy four you know that that was the first two keyboard model in the line so it looks actually very similar to this I'm actually on an easy 10 today but in the in terms of the keyboard it's uh, identical so you have a, a keyboard up here which is a little bit shorter and then a keyboard down here which is a full-size 61 keys and then uh, scooter on yours you're gonna have the two full-length keyboards so you have the top one is gonna be the same length as the bottom one Okay, but using this kind of silver panel technology um, is going to be very similar on a lot of the models. And uh, so what I thought I would do is I would start with our volume section and just kind of work my way and see how far we get. Because, again, last week what I did was kind of, a, kind of a brief overview of each section, right? You know, you have your volume section, and that controls the different volume levels that you might have. Um, you have... Let me spotlight my video here so I can get a bigger view there. There we go. So you have your volume section over here. Controls the different volume options that you have. Um, you have your music style section. That controls the music styles. Um, you have your, your kind of center console area, if you will. You know, your window, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have your uh, orchestral sounds and, and some other options off to the right. So we did kind of an overview of each one of those sections last week and so what I'd like to do now is just kind of do a deep dive on these different options that you have. So I'm going to start right off on the left and see how far we get. I'm, I'm guessing we're going to get probably to the middle today and then uh, do another session on the middle, do another session on the right side, but we'll see. And again, please, if you have any questions, make sure you wave at me or something. Um, and I will actually, I'll uh, allow you to just unmute yourself if you want. Um, but only uh, unmute yourself if you're if you're going to ask a question because otherwise it kind of gets feedback. You know, Zoom tries to prioritize the audio sometimes, and it's not always the best at <laughs> doing so. So only unmute yourself if you have a question, please. Okay, so right over here on the left side, all the way to the left of your instrument, and again, this is the same on nearly every instrument that Lowry or SD has made. Um, now the actual controls that you have are going to be a little bit different depending on the model that you own but all of your volume controls are over there on the left okay so everybody has a master volume master volume is going to control every sound that comes out of your instrument whether it's going to be louder or softer so if I turn on a style I was playing a, a style called ballroom Latin there for those two opening numbers I did okay so not only is that going to control all of the volume of my band, but any melody sound that I play, it's going to control that too. So if I turn that master down, I just turned it all the way off, and I can turn it up. Okay. Now, what I would recommend is probably setting it somewhere in the middle. And the reason I say that is because uh, everybody here also has an expression pedal. Okay, if you if you ever owned an Easy One, that was one of the only models that we put out that didn't have an expression pedal because it's just kind of a starting off model, and you don't want to have to worry about using your feet when you're just learning how to use your fingers on the keys. So, um, but starting with the Easy Two and up, um, they all had an expression pedal. Um, and so your expression pedal is similar to the master volume, and that it's going to control every aspect of the sound that's coming out of your instrument. So again, it controls the band that you're playing with, your, your chords, your melody, 
Um, what the difference is, though, is the master volume, if it's set really, really low, like if I put it on one, right, one out of ten, okay, I'm guessing you either can't hear that at all or maybe just barely if you got really good ears, okay, because this is about as low as it can go volume-wise. But as I put the expression pedal up, you might be able to just barely make that out. But right now my expression pedal is floored. That's as loud as it's going to go. All right? So I don't know if you can hear that, but that's why it's so soft is because my master volume is only on a 1 out of 10. Okay? Now, if I were to put it all the way up to 10, okay, now I have the pedal all the way up, right? Not floored, all the way up. But as soon as I give it a little bit of gas, that's just a little bit there. It's already pretty loud. And if I give it some more, pretty soon it's going to become much too loud. Now, I've got it kind of controlled on the mixer here, so hopefully it's not blasting anybody's ears out. But if you're playing at home and you put your master volume at 10 and you start flooring that gas pedal, you know, your expression pedal there, uh, I promise it's going to be too loud for almost anybody's hearing. Okay, so I've found the sweet spot to be somewhere in the middle, maybe like a five or a six out of ten. Depends on how much you use your expression pedal. Use it too much if you're one of those like set it and forget it people, you know, you just like to put it somewhere. Then you may want to use your master volume a, a little bit differently. But the way that I play, I, I prefer to have, um, and, and this I should say this goes for almost any instrument too, not just I'm on the ten here, but usually if I'm on, let's say, a Sterling or an Inspire, or a Journey, or whatever, or any, you know, whatever, when you sit down, usually about that middle range is, is the sweet spot for me. You know, again, you want to find something that's good for you, but um, just know that that master volume is going to kind of set the range, so how loud or soft you can go, and then the expression pedal kind of controls within that range that you've set how loud or soft everything's going to be. Does that make sense? Okay. So, let's go on here. So, on the uh, the easy four, um, you all gained uh, one of the volume control buttons, I believe. I would have to double check this. I don't have an easy four in front of me, but I believe you gained the bass volume control. Is that right? Can you give me a thumbs up for easy four folks? Yeah, that's what I thought. So the bass volume control is really important. Um, now, again, I'm on the 10 here, but it's going to look basically the same. Uh, when you touch your bass up or down, this is a little different because it only controls that low end sound. Um, now, Robert had mentioned this uh, in his classes last week. So if you took his variety class on Wednesday or Thursday, you might remember him talking about the bass and how you know people need to adjust it usually one way or the other. Now, again, it all comes down to preference. I tend to like a heavier or, or louder bass sound because I, I find it helps me keep the beat a little bit better. I just like that kind of thump, you know, I like the, the low end sound. So if I put on, um, let's do something besides Latin, let's do country, okay? So it's gonna come preset at a certain volume, right? No matter what style you're on, it's gonna come sounding pretty good. And you may think, well, I don't even need to adjust the bass, it sounds good to me. But if you do find it to be a little bit too loud or a little bit too soft, okay, there all right so hopefully you can hear the bass now if I turn the bass down right now there's no bass at all so hopefully this is coming through on your speakers or headphones now as I turn it up listen to how loud the bass is gonna get okay so that's at the maximum there so again, it's just kind of a preference thing, but I tend to like a louder bass. Um, I usually use an example of there's one of our students um, from Sun City Center here who uh, she said that loud bass made her nauseated. <laughs> and so she had to turn down the bass all the time. But what's cool is that you guys can lock in the setting that you like. So for example, let's say you, you're you like her and, and you think that uh, the bass is just a little bit too loud every time and you just would prefer it a little softer. Let's say you set it on a 6 out of 10 here. If you touch both of those buttons together, you're up and you're down on the bass, it'll say bass locked or bass level locked. What that means is that now you can play any style 
you can choose any melody sounds or whatever and that bass volume is not going to change now it will reset once you turn off the instrument if you hit home or if you hit the power off um, it will reset so when you first uh, turn the instrument on if this is something that you find you want to do you know if you set that bass volume to four or eight whatever it might be and lock it in then uh, it'll be like that until you turn off the instrument Oop, Kathy was waiting to get in here I gotta turn off our waiting room hi Kathy sorry if I made you wait there I had the uh, waiting room on um, so that's your base okay now the next one and this is this is really cool because this was not a feature in the the first generation of instruments that I came up with in uh, at Fletcher here was the SE series I don't know if anybody remembers that or if you had ever owned one but the amount of control that you have with these instruments which is the next generation um, is is way more way higher uh, a level of control than you did on the previous generation so even on an easy one easy one two three four and ten all the way up the line you'll have these buttons here that should be blue okay and it'll either say style or a comp and a comp would mean accompaniment okay and what that's going to do is going to it's going to vary from instrument to instrument a little bit now on on the easy 10 here when I touch style down what that means is it's going to turn off everything except for bass drums and my lower keyboard chord okay let me show you what I mean so if I put on let's say Broadway okay this is going to come on with uh, this is the, the style that's called opener it's Broadway and full band okay when uh, when I touch the chord what you're going to hear is a full orchestral you know band playing if you picture like a pit orchestra at a Broadway show um, but what I turn down the style all you're gonna hear is just the bass player the drummer and then my chord so check this out this is the full band uh, here's some pizzicato strings in there yeah. so if I turn down that style right now I just have bass drums and my chord okay now let me show you another example let's do big band this is uh, standards and full band okay so now I have even more stuff going on in the background all these horns trumpets trombones saxophones so watch when I turn down the style big difference right but you can still hear the chord. Okay, and I can actually turn up my chord. I can hear that better now. Okay, but that's what that style does, is it, if you do that down or up, it'll either decrease or increase the volume of everything in the band except for the bass player, the drummer, and then your chord in this case now I will mention since uh, a few of you all have the easy four um, when you uh, turn that down it will and also on the on the easy one um, it will also turn down your chord okay the difference on here is that I have a separate lower uh, volume control here and what lower means is it just has to do with the chord okay so if I were to touch just a chord Okay, you can hear the strings there, hopefully. Now I can turn that up or down. Okay, so I have a separate volume that controls only the chord. So that's one of the differences. Now, if you, if you have trouble hearing your chords, which some people do, and that's not an uncommon thing, so if that's something that you've uh, experienced before, you know, I wouldn't feel bad about that at all, because that's very common. Um, but that's why they put that lower uh, up and down button on there because some people have struggle to hear the chords a little bit and when you turn that up you can hear the chords a little bit better okay let's look at another example here if I put on that country style again okay now if I turn up my lower hear the difference there with the chord 
Marsha has a question. Marsha, what's up? Oh, I got to let you unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, it should be able to. You're still muted, Marsha. Can you unmute yourself? There you go. Uh, okay. Um, I've been uh, using the volume button uh, that's further to the right, to the left of the tempo, uh, to hear the beat. Is yes, this the, do the same the drums. thing? Yeah, uh, drums. Nope, right. but, that's, but that's my next, that was my next one, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're, you're one step ahead of the game. But uh, you're, that, that is a, the other volume control, so that's... Uh, absolutely a, a good point. So let me uh, spotlight myself again here. Um, so just to recap so far, we've, we talked about the master volume, the bass volume, the style or accompaniment volume, and then if you have an easy 10 or above, you'll have that lower volume also, and that's the one that really will help you hear your chords a little bit better. Okay, but each one is uh, independent volume control, right? Master volume controls everything. Bass controls just the bass player. Style or accompaniment is going to be kind of the, I hate to call them the extra players, but the non-core <laughs> members of, of the orchestra. Um, you know, everybody except bass and drums and your chord. And then, of course, that chord volume, which is just the lower left, by the way. should emphasize that the lower volume up here does not affect the melody sound on the lower right keyboard. It's just lower left. Okay. And then what Marsha mentioned is the last volume control. And again, this is on everybody's instrument. And this is gonna be, uh, if you look at your display window in the center, you go to the left, the first buttons you see are tempo. We'll get back to those. But the next one over, there should be a little picture of a drum set right here. Okay, and then you have an up and a down. And as, uh, as Marsha pointed out, that is your drum volume, right? So just like you can control the volume of your bass player, you can also control the volume of your drummer. And this can be cool for a number of different things. Now, you have full band pianist and guitarist styles potentially available to you, depending on what instrument you have. Okay, so I'm going to use a full band example. And when I do that, I'll show you how you can lower the volume because full band comes on with the drummer. Okay, so here's a full band style. Now, you can turn the drums off. So I just turn the drum volume all the way down. But to be honest, that's really not something that I would ever do. I shouldn't say never, but I would very rarely take the, the drums away from a full band style. What I'd be more likely to do with this is for any style that you have that's pianist or guitarist is to bring in the drums. In other words, turn the drum volume up. So let me show you. I was playing Girl from Ipanema. I'm going to use a different style, though. I'm going to use... Um, Latin guitarist. Okay, so when I go Latin guitarist, it's going to sound like this, right? Just guitar, because it's a guitarist style, right? If it was pianist, it would be just piano, right? But I'm going to use that guitarist style, Latin guitar, okay? And after the first, uh, the first A section, the first little part of the song, I want you to pay attention. I'm going to turn the drum volume up and you'll hear the drummer come in. So it, it essentially creates a full band style out of your pianist or guitarist styles. So check this out. That's pretty neat, right? So you can you can add the drums in on any pianist or guitarist style. So let's say I was on, I don't know, Broadway pianist. Okay, so that's just piano, right? The pianist and guitarist styles should come on with just piano or just guitar. But now I can add in the drums. All right, pretty neat. And then if I wanted to, if, once I added in the drums, I could turn the drums down for a different part of the song if I wanted to. Okay. So I think that's pretty neat. That's what I would say is the more practical application for your drum volume, is you take one of your pianist or guitarist styles and you add in the drums. 
All right. Does anybody have any questions so far on that stuff? I don't see anybody frantically waving at me. All righty. Well, let me step right into our next section here then, which is our music styles. So again, just moving kind of left to right here. So music styles, probably not going to spend too, too much time on this because I, you know, I, I know you all and, and, and I think we've covered this quite a bit. But the most important thing that I want, that I like to convey as far as um, the silver panel or the E-series model, that you have, if you have full band pianist and guitarist, you have three completely independent music styles per blue button that you have. Okay, if you have like an easy one, for example, you'd have the full band and the pianist, which means you'd have two independent styles per button. If you have an easy four or above, you'll have the, or sorry, an easy two and above, actually, you'll have full band, pianist, and guitarist. Now, what that means, again, is that for any of your, I call them the genre buttons, any of your genre buttons here, for example, if I touch ballad, I have three completely independent music styles for full band pianist and guitarist the reason i think it's so important to make that distinction is because when you see ballad and full band you think okay well that's the full band and if i want ballad and pianist well that's just the piano part of that full band part of the, of the full band style and if i touch guitarist well that's just the guitarist part of the full band that's not the case so make sure you don't think that so for each button that you have um, if you have an easy one, you have two different styles. If you have an easy two or above, you have three completely different music styles. Now, if you've ever looked in your manual, you'll see a, uh, a style table, okay? And I actually have a manual for the 10 here, so I can kind of show you what this, uh, what this would look like. And sometimes it helps because that'll maybe solidify um, how different some of these music styles actually are. Okay, so I'll hold this up just so you can see it. Now, some of you will have all of these styles. Some of you will have some of them. But in your manual, you should have a page that looks something like that. Okay, and it'll tell you what genre it is or what button. Um, it says button name standards, country, Broadway, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then you have full band, pianist, and guitarist. So let's take something like... Uh, you know, Broadway, for example. I like the Broadway button. Okay. If I touch Broadway and full band, I get that Broadway opener, which is a really neat style for show tunes. So check this out. Broadway, full band. Okay, if I go to Broadway Pianist, this is called Awesome Piano. It's like a Dennis Aw Awesome um, you know, a piano style. Now, this is nothing like that Broadway opener, right? There's your Broadway opener. Listen to the Pianist. Completely different. This is like a lounge piano, right? And then if I go to the Broadway guitarist, again, totally different style. This is the train. Everybody loves the train. Okay, so three completely different styles. And that's going to be the case for every single button that you have. You have, each one of those gives you an, an independent style. So I, I know I may be overemphasizing the, the point, but I think that's really important because a lot of people think that they have, well, I have country, and then I can either play that country as full band, pianist, or guitarist. And that's sort of true, but you got to know that those are each completely different musical styles okay um, I would also recommend knowing what each individual style is called 
Okay, now again, if you have your style table, you can look at that and say, okay, well, if I touch smooth and full band, it's called Easy 4-4. Four four. If I touch rock guitarist, it's called 50s guitar rock, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you have an Easy 10 or above, one of the cool things is that they, if you can see on the screen there, the display screen is actually double the size of an Easy 1, 2, 3, or 4. And this is important because those first two lines... Okay, they still tell you the tempo, the chord, and the key, just like it would um, on, uh, on an easy one, two, or three. The third line, though, actually tells you the name of the style. So I don't know if it's in, looks like it's in focus there. The name of this style is called 50s Guitar Rock. And then the bottom line tells me what melody sounds I'm using. So it says 50s Guitar and then Honky T, which is Honky Tonk Piano. So let's change it to a different one. Let's go to... Uh, Standards. Standards full band, you can hopefully see it on the screen there, is called Frank and the Count. That's the name of the music style. And then on the bottom line, it tells me trombone. That's my upper keyboard sound. And then piano on the lower keyboard. So that's one of the really neat things about having that um, display screen that's a little bit larger is it's going to give you more information. You know, the bigger the screen, the more information you get. That's basically the, the rule of thumb there. Okay, but again, each style has a name. So if you just look in your manual, um, you, can, you can look up, okay, well, what is it if I touch country and pianist? The name of the style is called Rinky Tink. So if you don't have it on your screen, you can look in the manual. You just have to make sure you have that uh, handy. Okay. But that's really all I wanted to say about the music styles. Does, it, does anybody have any questions on that? If, if nothing else, that should be the big take home of the day that you know that if you have full band pianist and guitarist, you have three completely different musical styles. Um, I will also mention one more thing too, because I know Scooter, you have a, a big window instrument. So if you ever happen to be playing on a big window, okay, um, you know, at, at a friend's house or here at the store or whatever, um, and you're on a big window instrument, uh, the way that they categorize the pianist and guitarist is a little bit different. So if you touch Broadway, for example, on, a, on an Inspire, which is uh, what Scooter has there, it'll come up in a bigger window in the middle, and it will show up with all of your Broadway styles. Okay, if I touch Broadway there, there isn't a full band pianist and guitarist button. So it'll show up in the middle with every Broadway style that's on there. But the difference will be that there's going to be one that's highlighted in black, like a black background, and there's one that's highlighted in a brown background. And they're in the same spot on each screen, okay, so no matter what genre button you touch. But the black one is uh, your pianist style. The brown is the guitarist style. Okay, so it's pretty easy to remember. If you ever happen to sit down at a at an instrument and you think, oh my gosh, this thing is overwhelming. I don't know what to touch. But you know that you like country. Well, you touch country. And if you're looking for that country guitarist, touch the style on the screen that has the brown background. And that's going to be your country guitarist. All righty. So let's, uh, let's move to the right a little bit here. So we've done the volumes, the music styles. And then the other thing I wanted to cover today is this section here, which doesn't really have a name, but everybody has it. And I think it's a pretty important one. And this covers your easy button. Um, and depending on the instrument, you might also have an MCS button, a memory button, intro and ending, start, stop, and fill. Section right here. I'm going to see if I can bring my uh, camera a little closer. Hopefully everybody can see that. So on the easy one, easy two, easy three, easy four, easy ten, it's going to be in the same spot right here. Okay. Um, now your options that you have might be a little bit different, but one of the things I think is kind of cool is explaining what the easy button actually does, because a lot of people don't know this. Um, you just think, well, I touch easy, and then it makes me sound good, right? <laughs> which is which is true, but it does it, it does more than that, and I think it's cool just to know. Uh, for nothing else, you know, the, the kind of educate yourself a little bit better about the technology that you have. So the easy button 
in the history of home organs is actually a, a, a fairly new feature if you look back to when Lowry started building everything. Um, it's been around, I'm, I'm guessing, probably about 20 years maybe at this point, 15, 20 years. Um, but it used to be that there wasn't an actual easy button. There were what I guess they would refer to as easy play features, and you got the same result. But what you'd have to do is you'd have to touch usually three buttons every time if you wanted those easy play features. Okay, and those three buttons were MCS, memory, and auto base. Okay, so MCS, memory, and auto base. And when you sat down to play, you'd have to do that every time unless you wanted to play like a traditional organist and you actually wanted to play the pedals and you wanted to play the full chords and all that stuff. So at some point, they added the button that says easy. So the easy button in itself actually doesn't do anything. What it does is it turns on those three features. It was just kind of a shortcut that you just touch one button and it turns on three buttons. So the easy button was kind of a shortcut, so you didn't have to push as many buttons at a time. So what do each one of those things do, you ask? Well, thank you for asking. That's a Robert joke. I learned that from him. <laughs> but so remember the three things I said. It's MCS, memory, auto bass. MCS is your music chord system. That is usually what people think of as being, quote unquote, the easy button because that's what enables you, instead of having to play, let's say, a chord like this with, oh, I don't know if you can see my fingers here. Instead of having to play a full chord like that, with MCS turned on, I could touch one note, just the C, and I get that same result. So instead of this, it was that, right? Much easier, one key versus three keys, same sound. So that was a huge one. Then another subset of that one was memory. Memory is what holds the chord for you. So if you noticed, when I didn't have the memory turned on just now, as I'm holding the note down, it's going to keep sounding. But as soon as I take my finger off, it stops. Right? OK. If I turn memory on, then I just have to touch the key, and it holds the chord for me. So again, less effort involved. You know, usually you'd want to keep your hand on the keys anyway, so that when the next chord comes up, all right, and if I want a little bit louder, I turn up my volume, right? My lower volume, make the chord a little bit louder. Okay. And then the last feature would be the automatic bass, and that's what adds in your bass notes so that you don't have to play the pedals. Okay, so everybody has the easy button, and that's really good news because that the easy button is kind of the, the foundation of, of our easy play kind of uh, technology here with Lowry and with Esty. Um, again, without the easy features, without the easy button's uh, features, you'd have to do the full chord, you'd have to play pedals on the, on the bass pedals, and you'd have to play, you know, all, all this other stuff like a traditional organist, and that's initially what put people off of learning the organ. It's too hard, it's too much stuff. So the easy button is on everybody's instrument. The difference is that as you go up, you might have the option to turn off something like memory. Now, this is really cool. Um, it's not something you'd want to do for every song, but if you remember, uh, what memory is, is it's the feature that holds the chord for you. Okay. Now, check this out. I'm going to play a little bit of Sound of Music. First, I'm going to play it with memory on, and then I'm going to turn memory off. Now, remember, my, my bass notes will still be there. I don't have to play the pedals. I don't know if you, can, you probably can't see my feet in the shot, too, but I'm not playing pedals, uh, and I'm still going to use the easy chords. I'm not going to play full chords. What the difference will be is how loud you hear the rest of the band, um, or sorry, not how loud, but how long you hear the rest of the band playing in the background, because when I turn memory off, it's only going to hold the note down, or it's only going to hold the chord for as long as I hold the note down. So check this out. I'm going to do it two different ways for you. With memory, and then you'll see me reach up and touch this button here, turn memory off, and you'll hear the change. So here's a little sound of music.
hear the difference there. So to me, in, in some settings, it's cool to turn that memory button off. You know, again, it depends on the song and your preferences and whatnot. But to me, it makes it sound more authentic, like a real orchestra, because if you've ever been to a show and you see a big picture, a big 101 piece string orchestra on stage, right? The whole the whole gamut of uh, instruments there. Um, not everybody's playing all the time, especially not all the string players. So if you touch a chord and it's just a constant hum, it probably still sounds pretty good, but it's not quite as authentic as being able to turn that memory button off. And then you have a little bit more command of how long, because you can still have the chord go as long as you want. You just have to press it down. That's pretty cool. Now it is a little bit more challenging to play that way. I will give you the heads up on that. So if you're if you've never tried to play without the memory button, then it, it will be a little bit more challenging. But it's not something that's beyond anybody here. I promise that you, you can do it, uh, and it can be fun to kind of accent your chords, right? Kind of like the right. I think that's kind of fun, fun kind of a cool way to play. Okay, so that's your easy button. Remember, those three parts are uh, MCS, memory, and automatic bass. Uh, the intro ending, I think I, I, everybody knows that at this point. Um, just know that if you touch the intro button before you start, that's what gives it the intro. In other words, if there's nothing going on and you touch intro, that's what it's going to play the intro. If there's already music going, right, if I have a style playing, and then I touch that same button, That'll be the ending. Okay. If you're ever confused, just look on your screen. It'll either say intro playing or ending playing. Okay. Um, next button over there is start stop. This is not one that you need to use to start the style really ever. I've seen some people do that, and you, you can. It does start the style. Uh, but keep in mind when you touch any musical style, let's say I was doing a pop in full band. This is pop shuffle. This is a cool one. Okay. I turn on my intro. Now if I touch this button here, it will start. Okay. But it started on a C chord. What if I don't want the C chord? Well, once you get it set up, don't touch start because you don't need to do that. You just touch your first chord of the song. That starts it, right? Okay. But the reason you, you would need to use that is for the stop. Okay, the stop is the important part. And I want to emphasize, especially when you're changing styles. Like if you're experimenting with some different stuff and you say, okay, well, I'm going to try country. Okay, well, that's not quite it. Maybe I'll just go to Latin. Uh, or maybe, no, I don't know, maybe rock. Or smooth. All right. If you're noticing, my tempo doesn't change. Right? My tempo is still at whatever I picked first, country. So if you're switching between styles, you want to make sure you touch stop. So if I try country first, eh, that's not quite it. Stop. Then try smooth. All right. That's eh, not quite it. We rock. All right. Because they each come on at a different tempo. Okay. So, and it can be fun too, just for, you know, if you don't want to use your ending every time, you know, if you're in kind of practice mode or whatever you want to call it, you can just touch that stop button. Um, and that will, uh, you know, it, it's just a different way to turn the style off instead of, um, instead of the ending every time. And, and one other thing too, I just thought about this. Uh, there are some students I've seen who uh, will do a no chord when they want to, like a smash chord, you know, when they want to stop the style not knowing that the drums keep going. Okay, so if you're playing, let's go to traditional here. Okay, this is my march or polka. And I've seen students many times go, okay, well, I'll stop it here. And it's like, do you not hear the drums still playing? Because <laughs> I can hear them. <laughs> so just keep in mind that when you do that no chord, it doesn't stop the style. It just stops everything except the drums. The drums keep going. So if you want to actually stop the style, you got to hit stop. Alrighty. 
And then one last thing for today. Boy, I got just to about the spot I said I would, right? As I get to the middle, and then we'll save the middle for another day. So last button here, an important one, is the fill button. Now, you all have your expression pedal with the uh, fill uh, switch off to the right. So if you have that option, that's really, really good. Because, uh, again, if you picture your foot, let me see if I can get on camera here. If your foot is on the pedal that goes back like back and forth like this, off to the right is going to be that switch that triggers the fill-in. If you don't have that, you do have to take your hand off the keyboard, reach up, and touch the fill. Um, keep in mind, it doesn't actually give you a different fill-in. So if I'm on standards and I touch the fill button, all right, it's going to be the same fill-in as if I do it on the foot switch. But the difference is that it's just much easier to kick your foot off to the right a little bit than to have to take your left hand or your right hand off of the keyboard, reach up, touch the fill button, hope that you hit that instead of stop. I've done that a couple times. I'll be, okay, let me do my big fill in. Whoops. <laughs> you touched the wrong button. Okay. So, and then, but even if you hit the, the right button, okay, there's your fill in, and then you can go higher. And your music's up here, and your left hand needs to go back down here. So it, it has the potential to be a little bit confusing. So if you have that option to use your right foot switch, I would highly recommend using that. Um, scooter on your instrument and on many of the larger instruments, you have a touch bar right here, and that also will uh, enable you to use the fill in that way. So a lot of people will do this where they put the thumb down here or they'll just touch down here like that. So if you have an instrument like that, or if you're ever playing on one, um, just know that you can get the same fill-in effect from touching down here instead. Okay. So either the button, the foot switch, which is, that's the way I learned. So I always do it on the foot switch or the uh, touch bar. Alrighty. So, whew, boy, I feel like I covered a lot of stuff today. We made pretty good progress in about 40 minutes here. So um, I'm going to bullet my gallery view here so I can see everybody. Does anybody have any questions? Um, again, we kind of covered the volume section, the music style section, and then your easy button and your intro ending, start, stop, and fill. So the floor is yours if you have any, any questions. Nobody's jumping at the bit, so. Yeah, I have a question. Oh yeah, go ahead, Marcia. I have trouble finding the uh, fill, my foot keeps slipping. So when I go to the fill with my foot, I either make my music louder or softer. <laughs> yes. Any tricks to keep that? You are in good steady? company because that is something that happens a lot. Um, and it happened to me a lot too. It, it is kind of a learning curve to get there. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, I don't know if I'll be able to, let me see if I can turn my And camera. sandals makes it worse. So I had a student, um, this is not something that I necessarily think about when I go to do it, but let me, let me show you if, if this will help. I had one student uh, a couple years back that did this, and, and she said that it helped her to do it a little bit better. There we go. So here's my right leg here. So what most people do, if you can see my, my foot, is they do this kind of like a kicking motion, like off to the right. And that's kind of what I do. Of course, you don't want to really kick because you don't want to hurt the, um, you know, you don't want to hurt the, uh, the the switch there. But if you just kind of brush it off to the right, that's kind of what I do. But what this student had suggested is if you move your leg, and like if you picture moving like your thigh to the right, your foot will inevitably move a little bit to the right also. And with the fill in, it doesn't need or with the fill switch, it doesn't need to be all the way over you just need to just graze it and it'll do the same fill in it's not it's not like you need to push it all the way to the right so i would try that when your foot's on the expression pedal think about moving your like your thigh over and it should move your foot just enough that it should hit the switch um if that doesn't work you know there, there's only so much you can do um as far as as far as trying to 
you know, find a different way to do it or whatever. I think a lot of it's just, it just depends on how often you try it and just keeping at it. Um, it's just, I know it's just one more thing to have to focus on while you're playing. There's already enough going on, but, um, you know, I would try, try the thigh thing, see if that works. Um, you know, there are some, uh, features uh, this is not on the easy four but i'll show you just for fun anyway uh hopefully you can see it looks like it came into light there the, you know the easy 10 here has pedals okay which normally are bass pedals but as hobbyists our students almost never use those for bass pedals one of the things they did with the easy 10 which was the first one in this line that has the pedals is they gave you the option in your feature menu. So I know you can't see it here, but if you've touched your feature button and you go to bass pedals, right now it's set on normal. And normal means, again, it's, right, it's actual bass notes. Um, if I scroll up, it, there's another option that says glide sustain. Okay, so I can use that to do my glide and sustain. Um, which, you know, again, it's, it's not really going to help you with, with the fill-in, but I wanted to point out that that is an option because another thing uh, that people do, it made me think of it because you said the, you know, the uh, volume getting louder and softer. I don't know if this will come out, but this was another Robert thing that he showed us a, a long time ago, and I got a good laugh out of this because we've all been there, myself included. He said, you know, when people are learning how to do the, uh, the glide, they'll say, Robert, oh, I was practicing all week. And I, I really think I got it. So check this out. I'm going to play Aloha, and I'm going to show you my glide. Watch this. All right, so I don't, I don't know if you could hear that, but the, the volume gets really loud and really soft, and, you know, the glide doesn't work. Um, so on the easy 10 you do have the option to put the glide and sustain down there so that you can do the glide instead of the um in, instead of the regular bass pedals uh and if you go up to a, a touchscreen model ever the big window instruments like scooter you'll have this you can actually put the um the fill in on the pedals as well okay so that's another option uh, but without the pedals really it's just a matter of of just doing it you know you just got to keep at it and um it, it would believe me for me it was a learning curve as well you know it's just one of those things that was not uh something i ever learned you know i took piano lessons for years but of course piano they don't have pedals like that so um that was something that i had to get used to as well it's just a matter of putting in the time but try that thigh thing that that my my one student i can't remember who that was i'm pretty sure it was somebody at our store here but she said that that really uh, worked for her does anybody else have any other questions all righty well let's see this week we have our variety classes coming up on wednesday and thursday we've got joni's class tomorrow i don't know if anybody here takes that but her class is uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow and that's for our students here in sun city center and then on friday we've got a couple from the villages they run the store up there um you know a couple hours north of us here and uh um, randy Nimi and dawn casanova are their names i don't know if anybody's ever met them but they typically because they're quite a ways away they um they don't do a whole lot of concerts traveling around. So these are going to be uh, people that you've probably never seen before. And I don't think I've ever heard uh, Randy play. I've heard Don play just once or twice, but I'm looking forward to, to their show. So that's going to be our Zoom musical this week is going to be our staff from the villages. So that should be pretty fun. So keep an eye out for the emails. And uh, of course, we'll keep you posted. If there's anything we can do to help, um, Marsha had mentioned earlier at, at the beginning of the class about the one on one. So we are doing one on one Zoom sessions. Um, I know uh, Scooter and Lucy, I think, are the only two that are here in town, right? Everybody else, is, or Marsha, you're here too, right? You're here. Um, but yeah, about half of our students are, are not here. And so um, we're offering the Zoom one on ones to anybody if you are in town. Um, but if you are in town and you do want to come in, um, there is the option to come in for a one-on-one -on -one session as well. You know, it's probably safer to do it on Zoom. Uh, we do keep the store sanitized, and, you know, I, I got my mask right here. I just take it off for the classes. 
Um, but uh, let us know if there's anything we can do in the meantime to, to help you out, anything at all. Okay? Yeah. All right, guys. It was great to see you all. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, catch you on Zoom hopefully pretty soon again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Great Bye. class, Brian. Thank you.